CataractCoach.com. Displaced phacic IOL and endothelial cell loss. Starting off at 2400, now it's 1600. So here's the case. You can see the IOL is certainly decentered. Here's anterior segment imaging. You can see that as well. But let's slow things down for just a second here. Here's the preoperative examination of the patient. You can see both right and left eyes have a good endothelial cell count. 2441 on the right, 2686 on the left, so pretty even. That was one year prior. Now the patient has that dislocated lens, which you saw here, and you can see it's a little bit shifted, and this can be due to certain sizing issues, etc. And now a year later, look, the right eye is down to 1623, whereas the left eye is still about the same at 25, 2600. So really lost a lot of endothelial cells on that right eye. And this is why the surgeon is going to elect to remove the lens and actually make the patient pseudophagic. So this fake guy, well, certainly is causing endothelial cell loss. Maybe it's because of the positioning of it because the other eye doesn't have any issues. So what do you do in this patient? Now, a lot of it depends on the patient's age. You know, this patient is 22 years old. It's really not ideal to make the patient pseudophagic. But you can see for whatever reason, maybe there's a sizing issue here or a placement issue, this lens is just not appropriately sitting in this eye. So viscoelastic, this is dispersive viscoelastic underneath the optic to lift it up and get it away from the crystalline lens. Now another option is you could take this lens out and leave the eye just with the normal human lens and then the patient can wear a contact lens in this eye. That's probably appropriate. I'm not sure if I'd go back in the eye and put another phacic IOL, given that the endothelial cell count now is 1,600. Remember, on a young patient like this, you want that endothelium to last the patient's lifetime, right? You don't want to have to do a DSEC DMEG down the road. So here, getting that lens out of position, getting it out of the cap, uh, out of the sulcus space, and you can see this lens has a hole there in the center of the optic, so that's a, a hole so fluid can flow through it. So these fake IOLs can be great products, and they can do very well for patients, like the patient's other eye. But sometimes in a case like this, you see that lens is really causing some endothelial cell loss. So now using these special forceps here, that lens is thin enough that you can just grab it, and it'll fold on itself, and you can pull it right outside the eye. These are very, very thin IO, uh, fake IOLs. So pull that right out of the eye, and there it goes. Now, when I first saw this video, I did email the surgeon, and I asked her, and I said, well, how come you didn't, you know, do something else? Why did you remove the lens and, you know, also take out the, the crystalline lens? And then we got forwarded those endothelial cell counts, and you can see, wow, what a difference. So really a big loss of endothelial cells. And if you've lost from 2,400 to 1,600 in a year, that's really not a good prognostic sign here. So in this case, the choice was to, the patient is going to become pseudo-faking now and be able to correct the refractive error that way. Now, on these young patients, especially like this, who are highly myopic, very important. Let's watch the patient carefully in the post op period. We all know that making a young patient, especially one without a PBD who's very my myopic, if you make them pseudophake, there is a risk of retinal issues there. As that capsular bag contracts and shifts down, that vitreous can move forwards, and you can put traction on the retina. So definitely watch the patient carefully in the post op period. Now, if you put a lens in here, let's see what are our choices. You could put a monofocal lens, in which case you'd probably be best off aiming for pretty close to plano. If anything, maybe just a bare pinch of myopia. You can see how soft this lens is. It can just be aspirated out. You don't even need the phaco probe. You can do the whole thing with the IA probe. I like the idea of getting it out of the capsule bag and away from the posterior capsule. That's a smart move. Here's the phaco probe. Again, you don't need any ultrasound energy. You can just aspirate it down. And look how fast it goes down. It's so soft. So young patients like this also more likely to need a YAG laser capsulotomy for posterior capsule opacification. Here's the end of the case. You can take out the cortex, clean this up pretty nicely. And again, watch the patient carefully in the post-op period. Make sure the posterior segment, the retinal periphery is very stable and there are no issues there. So interesting case. I have not seen a case like this before where in just one year where this newer design, fake guy well, has caused this endothelial cell loss due to IOL Big IOL mispositioning. Here comes the regular IOL going in the capsule bag. Let's see what we got here. It looks like a single piece acrylic and it looks like a monofocal design. So yeah, probably aiming for about plain on this eye. The other eye, of course, with the fake eye well is nice and stable and doing great with good endothelial cell count. And that I can do the accommodation for the near work for now. Great case. Thank you so much for sharing. I really enjoyed watching it.